My name is Erika Bañarelo. I'm from Costa Rica. I am a filmmaker. I started, uh, I, be I began to have interest in filmmaking when I was very young, about 13 years old. And I always wanted to go to film school, but in Costa Rica there wasn't really a film school at the time that I had to uh, go to university. So I studied film in the United States at Florida State University as a Fulbright Fellow. And once I came back from the States, I started teaching film in Costa Rica, mostly writing and directing courses. And also I did a lot of, of screenwriting for, for longer scripts, because what I mainly like to work in is fiction. Uh, apart from that, I did some corporate videos. And one day I was you know, on Facebook in 2008, and I was looking at a friend's page, and I saw this link that said Peace Boat, and I thought, what is this? You know, Because at the time I was writing a script that had to do with a, a boat. So I had never been on a boat, and I wanted to so see what it was like to, you know, to be, and so that I could write a, a, a more accurate script that I was th than the one I was writing. So interestingly enough, I sent them an email, and I said, you know, I would like to work as a volunteer for you and I applied for a job as a web reporter. However, I didn't get that job. So I was like, okay, at least I tried, you know, I, was, I gave it a shot. And then about a week later, they called me again and they said, well, you know, you didn't get the web reporter job, but we are gonna invite 100 ato atomic bomb 102 atomic bomb survivors, f also referred to as Hibakusha. And they're from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they're going to be with us for three months traveling around the world. And we want you to make a film about that instead of being the web reporter. So, of course, I said, yes, this is fits even better. You know, I'm a filmmaker. So I bought my own plane ticket to Tokyo. And all I had was a very small HDV camera and a radio microphone. And, you know, I hoped that they had some lights I could use on the boat in case I wanted to do an interview or something. And I really didn't know much about anything about nuclear weapons. All I wanted at the time was to have a great experience. We were going to visit 22 countries and, you know, be in on a boat and I could do my research for my script. Uh, but what I found during the voyage was that uh, I learned so much about the nuclear weapons and their effects and I heard so many testimonies and I saw so many pictures and I learned so, mo so much about the human side of it that I became really into the subject and really devoted to trying to make the best film possible. So uh, apart from that documentary, I came back from Costa Rica, from, from the boat and I came back to Costa Rica and I directed a short fiction film that's entitled the Hooker's Son, which is completely different from the documentary, but it's also a film that has some sort of social message to the audience. Okay. And um, the, the Peace Boat, what was it like sort of sailing around the world with these 102 elderly Japanese people? And what, what kind yeah. of stories did they tell? Well, there was something... I think I had a turning point when I was on the boat which was, um, they, they used to screen films, you know, in, in the movie theater, on the boat. And one day I went to see this film, uh, Japanese animation called Barefoot Gen. Um, I didn't know really what to expect. I just went because it was one more activity than the ones they had on board. But when I saw the film, I saw that everything that they had told me about uh, all the testimonies I had heard, I saw them visually. Like, I saw how uh, they saw the bluish-white light and how people burned to death in seconds and some people's eyes popped out and some people's skin was peeling, sp peeling down, the glass coming through their skin. It was just really, really a really graphic scene but it was also exactly what they all described in previous interviews. So that moment for me was the moment I, I realized, like, I can't believe I'm, at the time I was 27 years old, I can't believe I'm 27 and I didn't know all the details of what an atomic bomb can do and what happened, you know, 
63 years ago. At the time it was 63, now it's 65. But that gave me a lot of motivation to make my film better and to make sure that with my film it, I could reach a more broad audience, especially in Latin America or in the United States where where people don't really know what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They don't know, they don't listen to the human stories that often as you would probably do if you lived in Japan or in Asia in general. So. Okay. And these, uh, these, these survivors, how, how do they sort of view nuclear weapons? I mean, obviously they, they're not keen, but do they hold it against sort of the USA or do they hold it against their government or...? No. The survivors have a completely enthusiastic attitude in the sense that all they want to do is to abolish nuclear weapons and for them their dream before they die because most of their their average age is, age is 75 years old so they wish that they will they won't die before the nuclear weapons are completely abolished um, they understand that it's a hard task to do that you know but they want to make sure that they do everything they can to accomplish that mission. They are not bitter about the US, about what happened, you know, in regards to the USA. And they also recognized that Japan had also, you know, a big impact in during the events that happened during World War II. And they're not naive about that. But they are not interested in looking back at the effects with, you know, a, a sense of revenge or anything like that. They simply want a uh, that nobody, no matter what country they're from, goes through the hell on earth that they experienced when they saw this bomb dro being dropped in their cities.